Hi, we're here in Los Angeles at Elena Nitafor's workshop. She's teaching at our uh, regional conference and she's been teaching us a lot about what comes through the pelvis. But you know, Elena, I have a question to ask you. What's this thing about the ischium that was such a big deal that made such a big point over a whole weekend? Well, Eleanor, I am going to put down these wooden spoons which we used in the workshop right, okay. to actually awesome. signify something about where the hip joints are. Okay. But if you'd hold this, there we go, we've got a good background here, is uh, one of my delightful questions is to unearth the lack or the unclear self-images that we have that we don't even know that we have. So uh, I asked people in the workshop, if we angle the spine here, how much of the pelvis was above the axis of the hip joints? And if I can just reach for a spoon here, the spoons were actually to signify. May I have the second spoon? You have a free hand? Thank, Thank you. you very much. That in fact, if in the, let's say the posterior, can you hold the spoon? There we go. So we looked at the simple and common movement of a posterior tilt, anterior tilt. Now we have a disarticulated spine that has a lot of movement, but not really good representation of the curves. So the question I asked was, we'll take that spoon away, this one's better. The question I asked was, how much of the pelvis, can you hold on to the spoon? Mm -hmm. How much of the pelvis is percentage-wise above the axis of the hip joint and below? And we discovered that most people underestimated how much pelvis there is in this whole horseshoe of bone, which is the back of the sitting bone, mm -hmm. and then the ramus, or the arm of bone, that goes all the way to the pubis. And that we are, no matter what we do, let's like pretend this is a table here now, we don't need the spoon, that's good, okay? And we discovered through the workshop, through various ways of actually working by touching the back of the sitting bone when the person is supine, but we discovered even more profoundly that if you ignore work it, when you're working with somebody in your thinking, this part of the pelvis that is below the axis of the hip joint, and you do a simple movement that we all do, which is pushing upward and lengthening downward, that it is significantly impaired compared to when you go upward and just even in your thinking have the lower half of the pelvis, and significantly when you take the pelvis downward into an anterior tilt, that when you think of how the pelvis rocks on the back of the sitting bones, the length of the spine that emerges is extraordinary. I'm actually here to say it was superiorly extraordinary. There were so many incredible ahas that happened in the workshop. Actually, even happened for me too. But it was unbelievably beautiful to see. It wasn't pushing a spine. They were lengthening. And to me, that's such a great gift. And Elena, thank you for what you offered. You're welcome. And we got some phenomenal ATMs in there, didn't we? We sure yes. did. You know, yes. and so you guys, <laughs> Elena, if people wanted to contact you, how do they reach you? Uh, they should email me at nitefor, N-I-T-E-F-O-R, at AOL.com. And if I don't respond within a week, bug me again. And if I don't respond with it, just keep bugging me. I have a um, slightly too busy life. And at my advanced age, I'm raising a 12-year-old. <laughs> okay, and you're going to be gone how many weeks this year already? Um, I don't know. I haven't dared to count Okay. Up. But it's been a so, great pleasure to be here. Oh, we are so thankful. So call, contact, email Olena, and you too will learn how to rock and roll. Absolutely. <laughs>